Shoot. Hello and welcome to Heartrepreneur TV. I am your co-host Velma Gallant and we are happy to have you here today. I have a wonderful guest for you today and we're going to talk about some really juicy stuff. Leon Chia has 25 years of experience across various industries in Australia, the Middle East and Africa markets. He has experience working and consulting in areas of management, operational alignment, leadership training and development, and the creation of talent acquisition and development strategies. How do I say that? The AE word that you had in your introduction. <laughs> I forgot to ask you before we got started. We That's are okay. live. You can tell. We are live. Yeah. <laughs> Anything can happen on live. Um, Alchemy. Alchemy. Ah. Yeah. Is a is a boutique management consulting company based in Dubai, United Arab Emirates, with a focus on assisting SMEs, which I believe is subject matter experts. Is that correct? Small to medium enterprises. Ah, there we go. <laughs> That's why we don't do acronyms. <laughs> 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 okay so welcome to the show Leon I'm really happy to have you here thank you I'm, I'm very honored um, uh, to, to be on the show thank you so much so I have to ask you that alchemy and the yes. way you have it spelled is is it that way for because when I hear it I hear of like alchemy as an a-l-c-h-e-m-y correct. correct but it's not spelled that way so I don't know if that's really what you're pointing to or not it is. It is exactly what I'm pointing towards to Velma. So thank you for, for bringing that up. Um, there is a play on, on the word itself. Um, so I'll share with, with our audience. Mm -hmm. uh, the representation of Dubai, because the business is start, has uh, started in Dubai, and I am based in Dubai, is represented by AE, which is the first two letters there. My wife's name is Kimberly. Um, so her name, K-I-M, Kimmy, is, is there, and that's her nickname. Um, and the reason her name is in there is because when I uh, started this, this business and I left corporate, um, I was very fortunate that I had the full support of, of her, mm -hmm. uh, as well as my daughter. Um, so hence why her name is in there. And obviously the L is, is my initial, uh, Leon. So it is a play on the word alchemy uh, in the truest sense that um, being a management boutique to, to SMEs, um, whilst I don't have all the answers, however, I do have the uh, uh, the networks and, and, and the connections to mm. uh, partners and vendors that I can bring in together um, to service that particular uh, client of, of, of mine. Hence why I'm an alchemist. Uh, I bring everybody together under the one roof. That's awesome. And, and, and connecting, like mixing things together as you do it. Right. So I think right. that's really awesome. Okay. So um, I know, so the title of the show that we picked for today is Jumpstart Your Career. And yeah. I know that that is kind of from the perspective of um, I'm working inside of an organization. But I think that it's really important to delineate that even if someone is an entrepreneur, it is still their career. Correct. Yeah, correct. I think um, then the, the reason why... Um, I think we've decided on, on this particular title is because the world has changed um, and it's it's a it's a redundant and, and continuous uh, uh, topic of conversation that you know COVID is still amongst us uh, and COVID I think will, will be amongst us for for a little while longer. Um, however, the, the the world has changed over the last two years. Um, what we've seen is that um, the way uh, the employer and employee relationship has uh, in effect, change uh, over the, the last two years. There has been a bit more, a bit more of a shift uh, in terms of "quote unquote" power um, to to employees now. Um, and the reason for for us obviously choosing this this uh, title is to look at how not only uh, individuals that are currently uh, sort of in their career and looking to potentially transition or potentially change uh, uh, careers, but those that are also looking to get into uh, a, a new role, maybe because they've been made redundant or they've recently left and, and resigned uh, from, from their position. So um, hopefully we can, we, can, we can touch on, on a few of those topics. And, and you know, if, if you know, today's um, discussions uh, helps anybody in, in, in the audience, uh, then, then, uh, then it's been a successful uh, call. 
Awesome. Well, and, and so we, we do have business owners in here who are going to be in the process of hire, hiring teammates. They have uh, a team that they run and stuff like that. So it's going to be a value for a lot of our listeners as well. So okay. when it comes to um, jump starting our career, wh whether it is inside of an organization or when we're looking for an organization or whether we are the organization, yeah. um, mindset and values, why is that important? It's, it's absolutely important. I think it, it, it constitutes the foundation of, of everything uh, that, that we do, you know, uh, whether it's, it's in the job or in, in our careers, uh, or in our, in our personal life. Um, you know, understanding um, your mindset lays the foundation for in terms of where you see your future and where you see you want to take your career, um, you know, whether that be five years, uh, 10 years uh, down, down the road. Um, and it's always important, um, especially even from a, from a job seeker's perspective, you see a lot of um, potential recruiters asking the one of the most uh, common question is, you know, why is there such a gap uh, in your CV or why have you job hopped so much uh, throughout, your, uh, throughout your career? And, you know, this being from a HR side and being as well from a, a candidate side, uh, I've mm -hmm. seen both. Both, um, uh, both sides, S candidates struggle to, to, to tell their story or to explain to, to a recruiter uh, why certain things appear on their CV. Mm -hmm. And from my side I, and from a HR uh, point of view, if you're able to understand uh, what your mindset is and how you are um, creating um, that perception of either you know yourself your values and in your career um you can tell a story you can you can address all those difficult uh, or presumed presumed difficult questions asked by hr to you um you know I, I always tell my my clients as well as uh, candidates you know you know how do you talk to yourself in the morning um mm -hmm. you know what are your conscious thoughts and what are your unconscious thoughts um what are your habits uh you know and then there's a there's an old cliche, you know, I'm so busy. Uh, I, I've I've got I haven't stopped since eight o'clock this morning. I haven't had a chance to have lunch. Uh, I'm going to stay back an extra two hours to complete my work, you know. Um, but when you peel back the, the the layers and then you really deep dive into it, are you were you really that busy, you know? Um, so all of this sets up the foundation and establishes the baseline for the candidate as well as for a business uh, to, you know, to springboard um, um, their, either their career or, or their business growth. Great. So there was a few juicy things in there. I mean, you were talking about, you know, gaps in CVs and job hopping. And I know that that's something that occurs a lot more these days. Um, I worked with a young fellow who um, is transitioning into a new role and for him, even if that role doesn't work out, his plan is to stick with it for at least two years because otherwise it looks bad on his resume. And, and you were also talking about how do they tell their story yes. and how important the mindset is to that. And, and I get that because if I don't have a good response to that question, especially if I know it's coming, if I don't have a response to that question that I feel good about, Right. If it doesn't, because if I'm, if I say my story and in my mind, it's an excuse, then yeah. it's going to come across that way anyways. Whereas if I'm confident in what it is and why I've made the choices that I've mm -hmm. made, then that's the kind of story that I'm going to put across. Is that kind of what you're talking about? Exactly right. Exactly right. And, and it's, it's no secret. Um, the interview questions are freely available in all over Google and all over the internet. So you can find uh, the, the questions that HR typically uh, or recruiters uh, typically ask you. The trick with these with these questions, or not necessarily a trick, um, but the, the the thought process behind these questions is that from a em employer perspective as well as from a candidate perspective, is doing the research. Okay, from an from an employer or a business owner's perspective, why are you choosing to ask that question to the candidate? What are you hoping to hear 
from from the candidates uh, themselves, right? Um, and then from I mean, a candidate's perspective, it's about how can you succinctly and clearly explain your experience with that previous company, right? Now, a gap in a CV uh, or the job hopping in the CV doesn't necessarily um, uh, cancel you or eliminate you from a job consideration, provided that you can tell the right story as to why you have left that, that, that particular uh, uh, employer. Now, usually when an employee leaves a company, it's because something is off. Now, it could be whether the company's uh, value and vision and mission of where the company is heading is, is, doesn't gel with, with that particular employee. Or it could be because you know, potentially the line manager, you know, no fault of their own, maybe they were um, pushed or, or you know, selected for, for that line manager or for that senior manager position um, because another employee left all of a sudden and there was no handover. Um, there's no succession planning in place and there's potentially no training within that organization. So it's no fault of the line managers. But from an employee perspective, the reason I believe from, from my point of view is that the value of the employee is not lining up with either the line manager or the actual business itself. So they get that, that rumbling in their feeling. Now, if an employee can explain that to a recruiter and tell them, this is the reason why it didn't align with my value, maybe there was an integrity issue with the company, then if they can explain that coherently to the, to the hiring manager, then they've answered that question and they've covered that area of gaps as well as job hopping. Mm -hmm. Right. And that, that makes that makes a lot of sense. And I think that that points to um, the value of understanding your own values and right. yeah. um, the value of uh, like when you're talking about research, does the employee or the employer have similar values? Is there a values alignment going on with you and the organization or you and the employee? Yes, exactly. And I think, I think these days now it's, do you want a job or do you want a career? And I think from a, from a business owner's perspective, that's a few of the questions that um, you need to address to the candidate as well to understand where, where are they going? Are they, do, they, do you perceive them to be potentially a future manager, a future head off function, or maybe a potential CEO in line? Right, um, because I think that there are great employees and there are um, career employees as well. Um, but the secret to I think I think the key to to identifying these individuals is understanding their what I call their entrepreneurship, right, mm. um, as opposed to an entrepreneur, because. I think there's two distinct uh, uh, types of individuals uh, in, in in the marketplace. And those are, you know, probably like like ourselves and the business coaches that are listening to to to, to this uh, podcast today is that there are entrepreneurs, but if you can identify that that star player within your team um, as as potential entrepreneurs, they could set your business up to a whole different level because they believe in you. They could be your um, I don't want to offend anybody, but right or right hand woman or man uh, in your business. <laughs> uh, right. You. So there is, you have to identify those individuals and employees need to be clear on what they want. Do they want a job to pay the bills on a month to month basis? Or do they want an actual career out of, out of uh, going to these interviews, applying for all these jobs? That's so interesting. I know uh, one of my one of my clients had just. I don't do work with people in regards to their careers. I do work with people in regards to their beliefs. And so, I supported this woman with respect to her beliefs that were in place. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was between jobs. She ended up applying for a role that she found really interesting. But because she had those. Um, the right mindset and how do you tell your story she actually ended up getting offered 
a management position because they had just had some internal shifts in there. So she applied for one job and ended up getting another job because she was able to tell her story well. So I really see a lot of value in the, the kind of information that you're putting out here regarding the values alignment, knowing our story, that kind of thing. It's, I think it's super awesome oh, and very in alignment. You. Thank you so much for that, Velma. And I think I think um, there is, I say this with love, uh, and I, I know Dr. Terry says this with love as well, uh, and it's a little bit hard, but there is no excuse to front up to a meeting with a HR manager or a, a potential recruiter or your, or, or your future uh, um, uh, employer without having to do the research and doing mm -hmm. the work beforehand, right? Um, and I think if you're unable to understand and reflect on where your career has taken you or brought you to up until today, then you shouldn't be wasting the, uh, the hiring manager's time and you shouldn't be wasting your time because you are going to get disappointed when you don't hear that callback or you're going to get that email, unfortunately. And, and this, is the, this is what I'm currently seeing, especially a lot on, uh, on LinkedIn. Um, all the bad habits that are currently being being displayed on LinkedIn, um, and through my experiences of interviewing candidates, where I I, I I spent ten minutes with them because they've come in. Uh, not only did they turn up late, um, but they came in unprepared. They didn't know anything about the company, and I, I unfortunately cut the the, the forty five minute to a ten minute meeting and said, "I'm sorry, I I, I can't continue on the, the, the interview any further." So. Yeah. That's interesting. What are you What are you referring to as bad habits on LinkedIn? I'm. I'd like to understand that a little bit more. Yeah. So, uh, so a lot of uh, or what I've seen on LinkedIn so far at the moment is that um, you have recruiters that are currently um, advertising for for vacant positions. There's a love hate uh, relationship between uh, job seekers and recruiters, um, and right now they're it's a it's it's an employees market at the moment there, there are so, there's so many candidates available uh, right now that employers i believe are spoiled for choice uh, uh at present mm -hmm. so few bad habits that i've seen uh on on, on linkedin uh so far is um posting your cv or, or as, a, as a as a comment as a post and then asking for somebody to give you a job or somebody uh one example is that please don't ignore my uh my my linkedin posts uh i've been out of uh, in, uh, a job for the last eight months now um please share this with your network um and you know uh, and help me out so mm -hmm. yeah they're coming from that if it, it, honestly I hear the mindset aspect of that because that's coming from the place of desperation rather than confidence. Correct, correct, correct. correct. And there's no, um, the CV is there, but it only tells a certain part of, of a story. Uh, but what if the CV was poorly uh, designed or, or poorly misrepresented, right? Because it's all mm. about perception, right? Uh, we could interpret that CV in, in so many different ways. Um, and, and the because it's a, it's a public platform that thousands of individuals can see, it sets off a, or it gives you, uh, the recruiter and the hiring manager, a, a different perception about that, that individual, rightly or wrongly, but that's human nature. And it gives that perception, unfortunately. Um, and what I say, what I say to those, to those uh, individuals, if, if they're, obviously if they're listening, tight, tidy it up look at your pitch, look at your brand, instead of, you know, begging and, and coming from an area of, or, or, or a point of desperation, instead of posting your CV, talk about your achievements on there instead. Hi, my name is Leon. Uh, I have 25 years of experience uh, in management consulting, performance management, uh, leadership development, strategy planning, right? At this company, I achieved one, two, three, four. At another company, I was able to design and develop a strategic roadmap for succession planning for that company. And I completed this in 12 months. It, all of a sudden, it then breaks it down to 
what can you as an employee offer as a potential solution to your future and upcoming employer because they all have a they all have a challenge and they all have uh issues that they want to solve ask any of the business coaches uh listening to, to this call right but if an employee does not demonstrate that they can solve that solution with their skill set and with their um with the eager and their ability to learn uh, new and future skill sets, then un unfortunately they're going to be overlooked or be considered mm -hmm. for any any roles and any future upcoming roles within that, that that employer. And then that's when the frustration and the love hate happens uh, in, in the community. Well, and and that makes a lot of sense too because I know um, <clears throat> my background is administration, and so. And I, you know, I started administration back in the eight, late 80s. Yes, I'm, I'm revealing how old I am. But I started back in the late 80s. And my resume throughout the 90s and, and on was linear. It was very linear. I did this. I did this. I did this. These are tasks I did. I did this. I did this. And yeah. so what I'm hearing is, is, it's important to transition away from that and actually talk about our achievements rather than just our skills. Again, exactly, and, and, and you are right, Velma. Um, back back in the days, I mean, I'm 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 not that young either myself. <laughs> <laughs> back in the days, it was you were with a company for five years, and then you know you were then with another company for another five, six, seven years. There was a longevity in in the mm -hmm. CV. However, things obviously have changed now. And um, again, coming back to understanding the CV and telling your story, um, I didn't follow the traditional path. So my CV, if you look at it, is also job hopping as well. It was anywhere between 12 to 18 months I was with a company. However, the, 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 the tying piece of my career is that I've always been in either customer uh, management um, or employee uh, development. So that's the that's the tying link between my career and I can I can explain that an employee needs to be able to do that as well right to, to, to share their, their their story into how and where their career has taken them and where's the interconnecting link in in in, in their CVs and in their in their current story and, and I can see too from the perspective of being the business owner how it's important to be looking for those kinds of details as well when you're looking at uh, a potential team member is what are they bringing to the table not necessarily in the way of their skills but but in the way of their their mindset and their values and how important that is um so so if you were to give someone some advice about um, preparing for, I, I, I suspect it's going to be both ways, like for both the business owner and for both the um, uh, the employee or potential employee, is is getting really clear on who they are, and I think that's going to include the mindset and values. But what else might be in that? If we are to look at from a from a business perspective, um, my, my again my point of view is that from a business perspective, you need to look at what what is the skills that is currently lacking within within your organisation. Mm. Um, if you are a team of five, do all five, uh, including yourself as the founder and the CEO, do you do all five of you complement each other, or does one individual actually stand out to be a uh, that term and in an entrepreneur does that because then mm -hmm. that person you've identified as your potential star and your potential um, VP or president of that business then you need to grow and nurture that individual can that individual then take on uh, additional responsibilities to then grow the culture the value and and uh, mm -hmm. push the message that you and your vision and your mission of of your business right now from a, uh, um, an employee's uh, uh, perspective, the, the, 
the employee, you almost have to take a step, uh, take a step back and, and look at um, their current, again, their current skill sets um, and why do they actually want to work for, for that, that particular company. I'll come back to, to, the, to, the, um, to the previous comment that I made is that business has skills, has gaps, and why are they actually uh, looking to hire, right? Is it because um, they've identified a, 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 or they've received uh, client feedback that this is uh, potentially a gap uh, within their business, hence why they're going out to hire? Um, or is it because they feel that they should have an employee of that caliber or that skill to be in that business? Now, usually what happens is then they, 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 they just go on a, on, on a random um, uh, advertising spree um, and they get CVs, but unfortunately then it doesn't marry up because then they are getting frustrated potentially because they're potentially interviewing the wrong candidates. And it's because the business has not understood what value this particular individual will bring to their business. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And that makes that makes a lot of sense too. And I think that points to again when when you as an individual are looking at some of these um, roles that are available online, look at it to see if you've got the values alignment. Is it going to align with who you really are, or are you looking at it strictly from the perspective of I I I, I need to have income? Exactly right. It exactly doesn't right. matter. I just need to have income, and that that neediness. I think mm, ends up coming exactly. in there. And, and, if, and if you are unable to meet at least 80% of the job description that is advertised, if, if you don't have the, the examples or the necessary skill set to meet at least 80% of a job description, then don't apply because you, you're going you're gonna to be met with, with a disappointment. Right? Mm. Um, 80% is, 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 my, is, my, uh, is my feedback on, on job descriptions. And learn, and learn how to read uh, between the lines of a job description. The answers and what the company is looking for, if, if the company does provide a very detailed job description, um, the answers are in the job descriptions. What about those? What about those organizations that are using like AI to sort through the thousands of resumes that they have coming in? Like, how does somebody deal with that? Uh, from an employee perspective, or from a, yeah. from, a, from a business perspective? From an employee perspective, and and in my opinion, um, even from a business perspective, I I think it's dangerous, and you end up missing out on some really brilliant candidates that way. You do, you do, and 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 those um, softwares are, are set to identify keywords uh, picked up from the CV. Um, so you see a lot of CVs heavily uh, populated with keywords, just mm -hmm. to bypass um, the the screening process. Um, but from an employee perspective. Um, I don't actually, uh, or myself from my own experience, I don't make the recommendation of applying to those jobs that are advertised uh, on any social media platform. Um, the key here is to do your research about that business, whether to reach out to uh, a potential um, uh, employee uh, that is either going to be your line manager or is, is going to be working with you side by side have a have a conversation with them, approach them honestly and transparently that this is what you're intending to do um, and have that conversation to, to see whether that uh, company actually resonates with with what uh, with what, with your skill sets. Um, approach the recruiters. I know that the recruiters are inundated. However, if you are able to tailor your your approach uh, uh, again really succinctly and coherently, um, they will respond to you. Uh, and HR uh, managers will, will respond to you. Um, but you just have to do your research um, and, and tailor it uh, uh, nicely to, 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 to the recruiters. Awesome. There's some really excellent advice in there. And, and I, I've heard a lot of, a lot of good information in there for our business owners. And, you know, and to be quite honest, there's going to be, there's going to be people inside of this group who are, um, transitioning 
towards their entrepreneurship, but they're still working for those roles. And so I think it's really important for them because that, if that's what's supporting them to be able to transition to the business, they still want to take those things into consideration as they're moving through this transitionary period in their mm -hmm. career, because you still want to be able to be happy. Um, I know that in my previous years, I, like I had a business back in uh, between 2000 and five and 2012. And as I was moving towards that business, I actually was running away from the job I was in. And it was, it's quite interesting because as much as I loved the direction I was going, I actually brought that energy into my business. Right. Right. And that, and so that business did not survive. So it's, I think the same thing can occur with the mindset is if you're not happy in your role and that's why you're running away, you're going to be bringing that into your business. So make Correct. sure you're happy where you're at right now Correct. as you're transitioning to where you want to go. Right. And I think, I think just um, have, take a step back and before making it a rash, uh, a, a rash decision, you know, um, take a step back, understand where your value sits. And, and where your where your mind is, why are you unhappy with the with the role? Uh, and as you and you rightly uh, pointed out, Velma, you could carry that onto your own business, and then 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 it's an absolute disaster because then there's no safety net there, mm -hmm. right? Um, and often, entrepreneurship is 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 not for everybody, um, and this is why I said that if you believe that you are potentially have that entrepreneurial mindset why not look at entrepreneurship first? Can you contribute? Will your, will your business and, and will your current employer allow you to, to sell your creative ideas um, and, and um, make an impact and make some changes within the business first and see how that takes off? Because there's flexibility, you have a safety net there first mm -hmm. before looking at transitioning uh, uh, to entrepreneurship. Well, and that'd be a, it'd be a great learning ground. And the other part of it, it too, is that I'm hearing is, again, the value of making sure that wherever you're going, you've got that mindset and values alignment happening. Exactly right. Exactly right. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time today, Leon. This was absolutely fantastic. I found the conversation really fascinating. And I hope that the people who have been listening inside of Heartpreneurs with Terry Levine have found value in it. And for those of you who are out in YouTube land that are listening to this afterwards, come on over to Heartpreneurs with Terry Levine. You will be able to connect with other Heartpreneurs like myself, like Leon, like Terry, and uh, be able to support yourself in growing the business that you really love. Thanks again, Leon. This was fantastic. Appreciate your time, Velma. Thank you so much. And to you and to Terry, thank you so much. And we'll see you all again soon. Have a brilliant day, everyone.